Hello there, friends. It's great to see you on this seventh day of May 2020. Here's how today's gonna run out. Other hand, Miss Hoffman. There we go. We're gonna be doing some multiplying and dividing. We're talking about active thinking. Your kindness challenge, we'll talk about it. And today is Mort Spirits Challenge. Heroes versus villains. We'll talk about who is our favorite hero and who's our favorite villain. And also, we're going to talk about bees. Do not let me leave the stream without talking about bees. Let's see who's here. I got some AB, Marlene, JP, I see JJ. I got Gloria. I have the Axelmon. Awesome sauce, and it's great to see you on this lovely day. Oh, it's been a lovely, lovely day. So I just had my lunch with bagel bites. Made me really, really happy. Y'all, I need bagel, more bagel bites in my life, I've decided. Either that or, you know, I need to lay off the bagel bites. One of the two. We'll just go with I need more, right? Oh, has anybody else had lunch? If they had lunch, tell me what you had so Miss Perone can get some inspiration for what she wants for lunch. Mm, notice how only Miss Perone's class is here? Yeah, it happens. Sometimes my class takes a little bit longer to get in there. Mm, JP loves bagel bites. Yes, yeah, so let's get Miss Perron some ideas because she was telling me how she's like trying to figure out what she wants for lunch right now. Whew. Whew. Mm, I also would like to not. I like to sleep. You had a ham and a little a ham and a little rice for lunch. Ooh, that sounds really good. That sounds really good. I think I'm making kebabs for dinner tonight. I'm also gonna try my hand at making naan. And if you don't know what naan is, naan is a flatbread from India. And it's really, really good. It's quite delicious. Ah, JP had a Caesar salad. Salads are good. I love, I love a good salad. I haven't had a salad in a while. Maybe that's what I'll, I do. So to help make sure that, you know, Mr. Hoffman and I don't eat out as much as we can, I try to make sure I meal plan. Um, Moses and Stephanie, we are talking about what food we had for lunch just to kind of like warm ourselves up, get people in here. Ooh, we ordered a little Greek. Ooh, ooh, this Perone. We need to go get like those stuffed mushrooms again. And you know, that was so good. Hey, Emily, it's good to see you. We're talking about what we're having for lunch and food and stuff just because, you know, it's 11.48 on a Thursday, and, you know, we always just need a little conversation before we get down to some math. Good morning, Christian, dear. So, we're just talking about what we had. So, I had bagel bites. Bagel bites are delicious. Pepperoni. That's where it's at, guys. Mmm, spaghetti. Spaghetti is... Spaghetti's got good. You know what I want? I want my mom's spaghetti. I want my mom to cook me dinner with spaghetti. That's what I want right now. So if your mom's makes spaghetti and stuff or makes you a meal, tell them thank you today. Tell them, tell them thank you because, you know, when you become an adult and you don't live with mom or dad or auntie or grandma anymore, you, you end up missing their food a lot. And, like, I miss, I miss my mom's spaghetti a lot. but. You know, I got to talk to them last night. They're doing okay. Oh, Miss Perone. Yes. Thank you so much. Mother's Day this Sunday. If you've not made a card, <clears throat> now's the time to do it. Simple. You find a piece of paper, you fold it in half, and you say, Happy Mother's Day. What is this? Okay. You can just put Happy Mother's Day and just easy, set it right down. I promise you, they love it. Okay? Whew. Glad we got that PSA out of the way, because otherwise there'd be some unhappy mothers out there, and we want only happy mommies and grandmas and aunties and sisters, all those people, all the relatives, all the, the female influence in your life. Okay? So let's get down to business. JP, good luck. You got this. If push comes to shove, say, Mommy, it's for your Mother's Day card, and maybe she'll back off? I don't know. I'm not going to teach you how to hide things from your mom. You can figure that out on your own. 
Okay, hey Freddy, it's so good to see you this morning. So we are going to start right here. I told you I would do number seven of the problem. And the reason I wanted to do number seven, because it's a larger number going into a four digit number. And the same thing we did the other day where we took and we brain dumped. First thing we did was brain dump. So I want 70 times 10 times 100 times 1,000. And then you can do times 2 and times 5. Dupe, dupe, dupe. While I wait and I fill in the other ones, could you tell me what 70 times 2 is or... 70 times 5 is your choice whichever one you want to pick whatever one you want to do just tell me which what is it okay that's going to be 700 because i had one zero i had two zeros on to add of that because i'm just putting 70 this one will add three zeros two three Awesome. So now I'm just waiting for people to give me my answers. AB and um, JP tell me that 70 times 2 is 140. And 70 times 5 is what? 70 times 5. So 5 times 7 is 300 is three is gonna be 350 so now I can do my partial quotients draw my hangman's news straight on down that was actually a really nice line good job good job miss Hoffman now what factor hey what factor can I use first in this partial quotient wrong button partial quotients hey Fred yes Freddy has got it on lock with 140 what factor can I use for my first partial quotient? So what number, what, 70 times what is going to go into 1,610? 610. Now 610. What in my brain dump over here is going to go into 1,610? I know that you guys are typing away right now looking over here at my brain dump, but I'm just waiting for it to pop over onto my other program so that I can see it. Cause that's how I'm sharing my screen with you right now. My apologies for my sleepy McSleeperton. My body is just like meh. So what factor can I use into 1,610? Please type it in the chat and send it my way. I hear you, come on up. You hear Sven in the background. Come on. I'm not gonna pet you because you're not you're not coming up on your chair. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna pick seven times seventy times ten, and seventy times ten is seven hundred. So I'm gonna put seven hundred here. That's okay, Christian. I'm glad you're doing work. Zero minus zero is zero. One minus zero is one. Set of six minus seven can't do that. But if I take over and I regroup, so this becomes 16 over 7. 16 minus 7. 16 minus 7 is going to get us a whopping, amazing, fantabulous 9. So now we're left with 910. We can put another 70 times 10. 70 times 10 is going to be 700. So zero minus zero is zero. One minus zero is one. So nine minus seven is two. So I'm left with 210. Can't do another times 10. Can't do a times 100. Can't do it times 1,000. Can't do it times even a five. So I'm going to have to do by two. So 70 times two is 140. So I'm going to subtract that here. Zero minus zero is zero. Four, a 1 minus 4 can't do this becomes a 1 here. This becomes 11. 11 minus 4 is going to be 7. So I put the 7 here. 1 minus 1 is 0. So last but not least, how many times does 70 go into 70? It goes in 1 time. So 70 times 1 equals 70. 70 minus 70 is 
a whopping zero. So now I need to add up my partial quotients right here. 10 plus 10 plus 2 plus 1. So 10, 20, 22, 23. Answer is our quotient is 23. And we can double check this by multiplying. Awesome and awesome, my loves. Great job. I'm going to save this up right here. You can hear Mr. Spenny Wenny Boo Boo in the background begging for attention and love when, you know, Mr. Hoffman is downstairs eating his lunch and could easily, you can easily get your love and affection from him. Okay, here we go. Say hi, Sven. You know, he just wants all the love, all the affection. But, you know, uh, some of us got to teach today, so give me one second. Oof. He is just wanting all the attention today, my friends. So today we are going to pa do the next question right here. We're talking again about animal adaptations, like my friend Sven next door to me. So we are talking about what physical characteristics is an adaptation for animal that hunts, an animal that hunts. So we already know that an animal that hunts, what's, what, what is another name for an animal that hunts? We need to know what is another name for an animal that hunts, okay? While I wait, I will give Sven the love and attention that he wants. What is another, what's the name for another animal that hunts? Ooh, JP, I like that. I like the word. Predator. I like that word. That's a good word. A predator. What is another another word of what a predator eats? What is it classified as? Yes. Hey, Spenny Winnie is just sitting over here just enjoying the snot out of just scritches while I waiting here for other words jp on point with carnivore we know that is a carnivore it is a carnivore so these are all meat they like meat so now let's talk about this web feet does that make it easy to hunt that is usually for swimming Does not have anything to do with animal to hunt. Hanging upside down to sleep. Mm, that is a um, question. Would an omnivore be considered that as well? Yes, because we would be technically us, a physical, uh, we an animal that hunts technically. Uh, hanging upside down to sleep. That is that is not a that is a like that's a habitat right there. Habitat and gills on a fish. That's how it breathes. I don't think. I don't think that's the thing. And then sharp teeth and claws. Well, that's that. I'm gonna tell you right there. That's probably for hunting. Because you know, web feet. That's usually for swimming. Freddie, you're thinking the word you're looking for thinking is herbivores. You're thinking of herbivores. Omnivores eat both meat and plants. So examples of omnivores, humans, raccoons. Technically, birds are technically omnivores. They're little they're like little dinosaurs. Don't, don't, don't let Miss Um Ramsing know that they're little dinosaurs. She'll freak out. So A, B, C, or D. Is the answer to the question? What is the answer to the question? Is it A, sharp teeth and claws, B, gills on a fish, C, hanging upside down to sleep, or D, a webbed feet? I got one person with A. Oh, one tally for A. Anybody else? Anybody else with an answer? Predators, animals that hunt, which one of these talks about what have a physical characteristic for hunting. We've kind of talked about gills on a fish, help it breathe, hanging upside down to sleep, and it's adaption to its habitat. 
web feet. It's used for swimming in water and sharp teeth and gills. It's hunting. I got two for A. Got three for A. There are 11 humans on this stream, y'all. 11 humans on this stream. Not counting, let's say, minus one for me because I'm technically, I am on the stream with this. So we're down to 10 humans. I currently have 30% of my class participating. 30%, y'all. Anybody else with, if they think A is the right answer, I need at least 50%. So that means I need two more people to answer. Two more people that are not Miss Perone or, you know. So I would love to hear from somebody like Freddie or Moises. I would love to hear from you. Oh, actually, Moises, I already heard from you. Not bad. Fred, I would love to hear from you. Marlene, I know you are here. Christian, I would love to hear from you. What do you think the answer is? I'm calling you out because you checked in. Just because you checked in doesn't mean you get to check out halfway through. I totally understand if you're like, yo, Miss Hoffman, I had to go take care of something. And if I called you out and you're going back and watching this video later, please leave a comment below. So that way I know that you're participating. That also goes for my friends that watch this later and are like, oh, um, wasn't there a time? Um, I can be like, mm, you can type it down below because you're when I ask the question, you can answer it. So meat and other animals, yes. But Freddie, is it A, B, C, or D? Which one of these physical characteristics is an adaptation for animals that hunt for meat just like you did? Other animals and things. Great job. Though, uh, then again, you know, my, your chat could be lagging, and that's okay. So, the answer is A, by 30% of the class saying it's A, you are correct. That is for hunting, and hunting is what we wanted. So, I'm going to save that here. I'm going to put science here. And I'm going to ask that, hopefully, I'm trying to get us a special guest on Monday. And if you're not going to participate, I'm going to have to tell my special guest that she shouldn't come. And I mean, like, it's not our normal special guest. This is somebody, like, outside of the school. And I, I would love, I want her to come teach. But here we are. Okie dokie, artichokies. Take this off. Hey, Miss Perone, you ready to pop on? Here we come with Miss Perone. Woo. How are you doing? I'm good. I decided on a baked potato. Baked potatoes are good. I like baked mm. potatoes. I was learning how to make mochi, gnocchi earlier. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Perron, are you ready to learn about bees? Yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Okay, so I'm here on the oatmeal, and um, this is a really cool um this is a really cool comic about the japanese giant hornets so this artist in his comic about running mentioned being chased by japanese hornets for the sake of brevity i left out rather interesting bits about the dynamics that exist between these awful hornets and their not so nearly awful cousins the japanese honeybee so in the name of science i'm happy to happy to present a totally unnecessary digression about japanese honey uh, japanese giant hornets which are the ones that are um that are um that are being found here in the United States. But it's really cool about some adaptations that have happened with these. So when the European honeybees are exposed to Japanese hornets, it does not end well for the bees. A single Japanese hornet can kill an average of 40 honeybees a minute. That's a corpse every 1.5 seconds. So the honeybees that we know and we love that we get our honey for, they can kill be killed every 1.5 seconds by these Japanese giant hornets. Whoa. And a group of 30 can wipe out a colony of 10,000 European honeybees an hour. And here's the Japanese hornet, you know, wreaking havoc upon the, the poor little honeybees. But this is because European honeybees did not evolve alongside the Japanese hornets. Ooh. And therefore, they have no natural defense against them. Remember, we're talking about animal adaptations? This, yes. This is part of an adaptation. Japanese honeybees, however, had oceans of time to deal with these flesh-melting nightmarish creatures and have evolved a very unique way of combating them. 
When a swarm nears their nest, Japanese honeybees will swarm the hornet and enclose them in a tight wall. Deploy! Hug like you've never hugged before! Which the, the honeybees will vibrate their wings, which turns into a bee ball into a convection oven. Commence Operation Steamy Hot Murder Squish! I love these words. So, the Japanese honeybees can survive in temperatures of up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, but a Japanese giant hornet can only withstand temperatures of up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So, the honeybee will raise the internal temperature of the ball to exactly 117 degrees Fahrenheit. So, here's how well, how well they can last, and here's fire. Therefore, roasting the hornet to death, but leaving themselves unscathed. Isn't nature neat? Um, Freddie, I hope that your computer is just glitching, and that's why you're you keep typing a whole bunch of A's. Yeah, I think so. Okay, but hey, nature is awesome. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I think nature is amazing and fantastic, and these adaptations that these animals have done for the honey, the, the Japanese honeybee is amazing. I think it is pretty interesting to read about. It is. Leave it that way. It's interesting to read about. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get into any more of those, those to the giant hornets because, you know, we need to focus on fun, positive things, so we'll Agreed. focus on that. Agreed. And also... There's just a lot of hype around it, guys. Like everything else, there's a lot being fantasized about right now because everyone's at home bored, so they make big generalizations about things. Yeah. So, and that's that's happened. So, um, before we wrap up, I have a few things to. Um, remind us, ticking down at the bottom is we're going to have a fun stream today at, on 2.15. Uh, we're going to try our best not to be late today, but we'll be there at 2.15 today, and um, you will see us attempt to do the running game. Ms. Perona and I were practicing before. Did not go well, but, you know, hey, it's what it is. And then tomorrow we will not be doing a stream. Does not mean that you don't get to um, do your work. It just means that Miss Perona and I have to, uh, we're going to school for a meeting and we'll be there. So please, please, please make sure that you are doing your work, sending us pictures either through our mind, Etsy, or Google Voice numbers. Please, if you text us through Google Voice, use your parents' phone. And do if, not text us after like six or seven o'clock at night because we won't answer you. No, Miss Pro fell asleep at six last night, so yeah. you know. If you need somebody to talk to, reach out to Miss Boylan. Um, school choice opens tomorrow. School choice opens tomorrow. I don't know how many more times I can say it. School choice opens tomorrow. Please, 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 please get on to make your choice. Miss Perona and I have a YouTube video on our channel showing you and walking you through that. On both um, of our channels. On our channels. Please watch that video today at some point. It would be very helpful. It's okay. Um, All right, go back and watch because Miss Hoffman covered some um, really cool things with four-digit division today. Yeah, it was fun. Um, otherwise, our kindness challenge is clean the windows. Remember to send a picture to Miss Snellgrove of your heroes versus villains. Personally, I think I'm more of a Thor person. I know that Mr. Britt is a Batman person. If he could choose the ultimate villain, he would probably choose the Joker, he's telling me. Of course, he came home from lunch today. He is back at work. And that sound that you just heard was his Dr. Pepper. Can you bring me what you're eating, please? Because I feel like the kids would connect with it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to connect with it. Snack. And his snack that he's eating are these. Yep, nope, the kids, yep, kids would agree with him. I find the little wrappers everywhere. Yeah. So. Always. Always. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join us at 2.15 today to see us um, fail epically at some renegades. And 
Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys on Monday, okay? Okay, sorry, Mr. Britt right. was telling me something. You're good. So ladies and gentlemen, we love and miss you. Air hugs. Ciao for now. Bye.